Russian troops have launched a counteroffensive in the Kursk region. The pro-war telegram channels, Rybar, and two majors, close to the Russian Defense Ministry, claim that the Russian army, having started fighting in several settlements in the Kursk region, has captured at least two of them, Gordievka and Nezepnoi. The villages are located four to six kilometers from the Ukrainian border and have been under the control of the Ukrainian armed forces since mid-August. Another pro-war telegram channel, Veterans Notes, writes that during the battles of September 9th to 10th, Russian troops drove the Ukrainian armed forces out of nine settlements in the Kursk region. Russian troops intend to cut off a Ukrainian advance in the Kursk region ahead of a coordinated operation to dislodge the defense forces, the U.S. Institute ISW reports. Analysts say the Russians launched counterattacks along the western edge of the Ukrainian offensive in the Kursk region and captured several towns northeast and south of Koronevo. For example, Geolocation data released on September 11 indicated that Russian forces had re-established positions east of Zurovli. Several Russian sources claim that Russian forces had fully captured Snagist, but ISW has not seen visual confirmation of these claims. It is also noted that Ukrainian troops have launched new attacks against the Russian counteroffensive west of Snagist and across the entire Ukrainian section of the front in the Kursk region. Russian forces may intend to temporarily cut off the Ukrainian advance in the Kursk region before launching a more organized and well-equipped operation to push Ukrainian forces out of Russian territory, the report said. Experts believe that Russian forces are trying to gain more tactical advantage during these initial counterattacks before launching a broader counteroffensive against Ukrainian forces operating northeast of Koroniv and near Sudza. The Ukrainian project Deep State confirms reports of a Russian counteroffensive. In particular, it reported an attack by the Russian army from Kornivo, from where the Ukrainian armed forces had previously retreated. Deep State also writes that Russian forces began active assault operations, first transporting armored vehicles across the Syme and then across smaller rivers. The situation on the left flank of the Ukrainian group in the Kursk region has worsened, Deep State notes. Military analyst Rob Lee also reported on the advance of the Russian convoy. He also noted that the Russians were able to transport armored forces across the Syme River despite Ukrainian strikes on bridges. There is no official confirmation of a Russian counteroffensive in the Kursk region from either the Russian or Ukrainian sides. The commander of the Akhmet Special Forces, Major General Apti Alodinov, who regularly comments on the Ukrainian Armed Forces offensive in the Kursk region, told RIA Novosti that about 10 populated areas have already been cleared and taken under control by Russian troops. of Mariupol by Russian troops in 2022, the city was left in ruins. Local residents whose homes were destroyed are now deprived of their own housing and are forced to live in poverty despite the promises of the occupiers. New buildings erected on the site of destroyed houses are sold and not given away for free. This was reported by the Telegram channel Ukraine365. Participants in a small rally where residents of Mariupol recorded an appeal to the occupation authorities said that they have been living in difficult conditions for two years without their own housing. They said that the occupation authorities are ignoring their property rights, although their apartment building had previously been privatized. One of the women emphasized that pensioners and children are suffering, as well as young people who are forced to live in inhumane conditions. She also added that at the time of retirement, she considered herself well off, but now she's left with only a backpack and cannot survive on the payments provided by the occupation administration. 
In conclusion, the protesters expressed their outrage at how they were being deprived of the right to housing, which they had long considered their own, emphasizing that their home was well kept and an example for all of Mariupol. A refugee from Mariupol exposed Russian propaganda that spreads information about the allegedly rapid restoration of the city through paid bloggers. In fact, the occupation administration of Mariupol made the city's native residents homeless, depriving them of housing. The man who still communicates with his acquaintances from the city and knows the real situation recalled that before the arrival of the Russian army in 2022, the city was rapidly developing and flourishing. However, Russia's bombings have effectively destroyed the city where, according to the most rough estimates, about 2,600 multi-story buildings and thousands more private homes have been destroyed. However, Russian propaganda does not talk about this. People who lived on the left bank in Mariupol were thrown out onto the street. Their houses were demolished and the land was given over for development, the man said. Now, the Russian occupation administration is demolishing damaged houses and allocating land for development where they will settle people from Russia.